What's up desktop, it's Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding and we are back with another video and today we have John Hanson on the show and I'm super excited for this one because this guy is a two-time natural Mr. Universe, one-time natural Mr. Olympia and he's a bodybuilding historian but has a wealth of knowledge. Now today we're going to interview John on how he got into the whole sport and everything like that but we're going to have John on weekly. So we're going to have a weekly show called Bodybuilding History Bites with John Hanson. They're going to be released Thursday morning, uh, American Eastern time, so for example in Australia, that's Thursday night and whatnot, you can work it out for everywhere else in the world as well, UK somewhere in the middle of that. So yeah, it's gonna be really, really cool and I'm so excited for it because we've recorded two episodes already, like one's on the 2001 Olympia, which he was at, and that's the one between Ronnie and Jay Cutler where it was you know close and Jay was winning after pre-judging and Ronnie took it and he's got some really interesting info on that and just honestly, he's just crazy with the knowledge he's got, you know, interactions between Arnold and Franco and Arnold and Joe Weider and what happened behind the scenes at all these comps. It's just crazy. So I'm super excited to have John on board with Bodybuilding History Bites. And remember, weekly on Thursdays, the reason I put it Thursdays, I might throw back Thursday. That's the reason why I did it. Make sure you like this video and let me know in the comments if you're excited and you really want to watch these Bodybuilding History shows as well, because I think it's going to be really, really cool once we get into these episodes as well. Also, subscribe and hit that notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding, and you won't miss any of these future episodes. So anyway, guys, on with the video, and I hope you enjoy it. Back to desktop bodybuilding. Today I'm joined by bodybuilding historian. He's a three time natural Mr. Universe and the first winner of the natural Mr. Olympia. I'm pleased to be welcomed, sorry, joined by John Hanson. Mate, welcome to the show. Hey, Xavier. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. I've been very excited to do this because I was thinking of show ideas and I, this is sort of going to be an interview where I get people get to know who you are and why you know all the knowledge you know because I literally listen to your podcast and watch your YouTube videos and I'm like blown away by the little intricacies you know about bodybuilding history. I mean, you you tell yeah. stories about what Arnold said to Joe Weider in certain situations <laughs> and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah. how do you know all this stuff? But obviously <laughs> you've been around the scene for quite a while and you've obviously picked up all this knowledge from probably other people and everything you've done with interviewing people and stuff as well over the years. I mean, I saw your YouTube channel before and I saw you had close to 900 videos uploaded. And I was like, this dude's yeah. done his work and like I said I've been listening to you since you know probably 10 12 years ago I don't know how long it's been since RX Muscle was um sort of created you were one of those guys on there doing you know yeah. sort of um interviews and stuff like that so tell us a little bit about how you actually got into bodybuilding and when it all started for you okay I started bodybuilding in 1977 when I was 14 years old um I got into it because I used to read comic books when I was a kid and I loved the superheroes how they looked because they were so muscular. Um, back in the 70s, bodybuilding was a really small sport, and not a lot of people were actually working out. So you didn't really see many gyms, and you really didn't see too many muscular people around. You know, It was really an oddity to have that. So when I read the comic books, I wasn't aware that there was a sport called bodybuilding. I didn't know anything about it. So um, I think when I was, I can't remember what age I was, but I saw a picture of Bruce Lee at a car show and this was not too many years after he died. And it said, in memoriam, Bruce Lee. And it had a picture of him from Enter the Dragon. And he was ripped. And I was like, wow, who is that guy? He looked like a superhero to me. That was like the first real-life guy I ever saw who looked like a superhero. So I started uh, becoming a Bruce Lee fan. I bought all the books I could about him. I read everything about him. And one of the things he did was he weight trained. You know, he was one of the first people to weight train. He didn't think it would make him slower. He knew it would make him more powerful. So when my parents asked me what I wanted for Christmas that year, I told them I wanted a weight training set. So when they bought me the weight training set, it had a little program in there with like 10 exercises, but I didn't know what else to do. I wanted to do more. So that's when I started going out and buying the bodybuilding magazines, and that's when I found out what bodybuilding was. And that was about like 1977. And then I became a bodybuilding fanatic. I was reading the magazines every month. And I said at that age, at 14, I said, I want to win Mr. Universe one day and be featured in the magazines like these guys I was reading about. So that was my goal since I was 14. And then I started competing when I was 16, like two years later, I started competing in the teenage shows and I ended up doing uh, competing in 10 teenage contests between 16 and 19, so I competed a lot. Wow. And then I took some time off, I needed to bulk up, I needed to, cause I was an ectomorph, I was very skinny. 
So competing that much, it didn't give me a lot of time to get enough size. So I used the next two years when I was 20 and 21 just to bulk up and get big. And I just ate a lot and I was training four days a week using all the compound exercises. And I got up to 230 pounds by the time I was 21 years old. So I had increased my weight by 100 pounds because I started at 135 and now I was 230. Wow. So then so I started it. competing and I wanted to do um, the Mr. Universe contest. So I started working my way up. I did state level shows and then regional level shows and then natural, I mean, uh, national level shows. And just uh, quickly, was this the natural Mr. Universe? No, this was a NPC. NPC? So oh, yeah. Like wow. Non-tested shows. Yeah. But by the time I got to the national level, I realized that, you know, the steroids were much more involved than I thought they would be. Yeah. And I didn't really want to go that route. I didn't want to take more steroids. And so I just, uh, I, that's when I decided to make the switch to the natural competitions, the natural body right. shows. Because they were starting to get big in the, like the late 80s. I think when the pro bodybuilders started to get really big, the natural bodybuilding organizations got a little bit bigger. They got more popular. So then um, my second year of competing in the natural shows, I found out there was a contest called the Natural Mr. Universe. And that was a title I wanted to win since I was 14. So I set my sights on that, and I won that title in 1992. And then I just competed in natural bodybuilding shows for probably the next 15 years or so until I was in my early 40s. I ended up winning the Natural Universe three times, and then I won the very first Natural Olympia, which was in 1998 in Greece. That's awesome. That's so cool. And when you obviously you got like into competing, did you know like after that first show, we, is, did that hook you? Like, were you just like, I've got to do more, more, and that's why you competed so much? Oh, yeah, major? absolutely. Yeah, when I did my first show, I didn't do well. I, I think I only got sixth, and I was 16, and the guys that were winning were like 18, 19. They were big. You know, they were like men. Yeah. And, uh, but I realized how far I had to go. So that's why I competed so much as a teenager because it really motivated me, you know, to compete and uh, I mean to get better. So every time I would do a show, I would look at the pictures from the prejudging and I would look at my physique and I would analyze it and say, oh, wow, I need to bring my legs up. I need to bring my shoulders up. So then I would work on those for the next contest. And then I, same thing, I would get the pictures again and I would look. So it was a long climb up. It took me like, I think I got sixth in my first show i got ninth in my second i got sixth again then i got second and then i finally won so it took me like wow. five shows to win i didn't think there'd be that big of lineups back then like thinking about back in the you know those those early days of bodybuilding where, where it was really becoming more and more popular slowly then and it's funny because your story about actually getting into bodybuilding was based off you seeing Bruce Lee. And now the story yeah. is that, I mean, you know, for probably 10, 15 years ago, like my story was, you know, like my dad did bodybuilding. So that's sort of how that got me into it. And I wanted to uh, get a bit bigger for sports and whatnot. And that's a pretty common story. People get bigger for football and stuff. And now it's almost like going into another era where people are training, but they're training because they see someone on Instagram. And so it's like, you know, yeah. you speak, people see yeah. magazines and now it's on Instagram. And it's funny how right. just through the different ages, like everyone gets into it for a different reason. But through yeah. years of bodybuilding, how do you feel about today's bodybuilding versus the bodybuilding of yesteryear? Are you disillusioned by some of it, some of it in the way guys have to really be, I suppose, be businessmen and be on Instagram and do all that sort of stuff now? Is that do you sort of like rebel against that because of the the day you're from and how bodybuilding is different now? I guess. Yeah, it's very very different, and the the big difference is like you said, the internet. Um, back then we had the magazine, so we would all, everybody would wait for the magazine to come out once a month and then we would get it and we would read everything and we would see the pictures of all the new guys. So you wouldn't see any pictures of these guys until it came out in the magazines. And even like the contest, like the Mr. Olympia would usually be held in like September or October. You wouldn't get the magazine until January. So you'd have to wait that yeah. long until you even saw the results, you know, and everybody would always call Gold's Gym in Venice on Sunday morning. Because they would know, you know, there was, you know, that was the place to call. So we would all call Sunday morning. Who won? Who won the Olympia? You know, and the poor guy at the front desk would have to give the top six, you know, to like 500 people that day, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's really, really different because everything's instant now, you know. And back then, I think it was to make it in the magazines, you really had to be a champion. But today with the Instagram and all the social media, anybody can go on. You know, you don't have to wait to get into a magazine. So. In a way, it's good for everybody because anybody can advertise themselves. You know, like when I was in my 20s, I thought I had a really good physique and I was winning state level titles, but I couldn't get into the magazines unless I won like the Nationals or the USA. 
So you yeah. really had to be really a top guy to make it into the magazines. Um, the one of the things I missed though was the articles in the magazines were so in depth. You would really get to know about each of the competitors, all the bodybuilders. Like they would write these profile articles on these bodybuilders, and you would know where they're from, how they got started, and all that stuff was all in the magazines. But today, it's all kind of glossed over because it's so quick. You know, yeah. they just give the results of the contest, they show the pictures of the guys, but you don't really get to know them. So I think that's that's what's really missing a lot from the way it used to be, the way it is. You don't get that in-depth analysis. And even like the contest, like guys like Peter McGough or Lonnie Teeper, they would go to the shows and, they, you know, they would write like two-part articles about the Olympia. And they would be like long articles, like 10 pages, you know, getting all the details of the Olympia. And now we don't get any of that, you know, because it's just, it's live streamed and we see it. And then once it's over, it's over. And then we just wait for the next year, you know. It's like yeah. so instant that we don't really get to, uh, we don't get the in-depth knowledge, I think, of it. Yeah, and what spiked your interest in terms of actually covering the sport? Because you you know a lot of details, like I mentioned at the start of this interview, like you know just the intricacies and you know all this sort of stuff. So what, I suppose, spiked your interest in the whole history of the sport? Obviously, you grew up through part of the history of it. Yeah. But what spiked yeah. your interest to really, really get into it and actually you know put this stuff out there in terms of what you're doing with your podcast and what you're doing with YouTube and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, well, the reason I know so much about the sport was because I started it in 1977, so I go way back. And um, like I said, with the magazines, we used to read them and then reread them and read them again. We probably read them ten times because to wait for the next month, you know, because yeah. there was nothing new to come out, you know. So you just had to reread that same magazine. So I think that's why I, I have all this knowledge retained and all this history retained because I read the magazine so many times. So you mentioned like conversations between Joe Weider and Arnold. I remember reading that, you know, and I remember all these things, all the intricacies and the details of these articles. So um, what I'm doing now is I have a podcast called the Bodybuilding Legends Podcast, and my website is Bodybuilding Legends Show. So years ago, I think probably like three or four years ago, I started doing Skype interviews with some of these bodybuilders, like Bill Grant and Mike Katz, and we were talking about their whole career. And I wanted to get that out there because I think a lot of the younger guys today, they don't know the history of the sport. They only know what they read on uh, Instagram or, or what they read on the Internet. And a lot of that knowledge sometimes can be wrong. You know, sometimes yeah. stuff on the Internet is wrong. So I thought what I would do is I would interview these guys in person, one on one, get the real story. And I wanted to find out, like, how did you feel going into that contest? How did it feel losing to Ken Waller at the Mr. Uh, Uni the Universe in 1975 when he stole their T-shirt and all that stuff, you know. Okay. So I want I wanted to get it from them personally. So those uh, those interviews turned out to be really popular. So that's why I started the podcast two and a half years ago. So now we do a weekly podcast where I try to talk to some of the legends of the sport. Um, if we don't have anybody to talk to, then we'll talk about like the history of the sport, like me and Jerry Branham, who's a great guest. He's one of my favorite guests. He used to write for Joe Weider's magazine for many years. Jerry's been around. He moved to California in 1968, right before Arnold did. So he met Arnold right wow. when he came to America in 1968. So Jerry's got some great stories, and we went back and we talked about the year uh, 1969, 1979, 1989. We just did that on my podcast. So yeah. sometimes we'll talk about the history of the sport, or we'll talk to the the bodybuilding legends themselves and get the get the interviews from them, you know, and find out about their stories. But I just think it's important to do that because we need to preserve the history, you know, and now that things are moving so fast, uh, a lot of these guys are dying. You know, we just lost last year, uh, Ed Corny. We lost Franco Colombo. We lost Joseph Wilkosh from Germany. So I, unfortunately I didn't get to interview any of those guys. So I never really got their story, but that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to interview as many guys as possible just to get their history and their story and get it on record. You know, and I think that'll be like a time capsule, you know, maybe years from now where people will go back and read and listen to these interviews because just to get the history of the sport. Yeah, for sure. And I remember when, um, like, Franco passed, I remember actually going back and listening to interviews that he had done, and I hope that the same sort of thing happens with your podcast as well when some of these guys do pass on, which, you know, obviously I'm not wishing that on anyone, but it will happen yeah. sooner or later. And it's great that you're actually getting this and it's going to be out there, it's going to be out there forever and people are going to be able to actually refer back and say, oh, this actually happened and we know this story. And I think that's really, really cool what you're doing because I think the history is a little bit lost, especially on the newer generation, which, like you said, is very much, you know, they hear something and then 
it's out of their mind the next minute, you know what I mean? So I, I yeah. love what you're doing and that's why I actually wanted to bring you on and bring you onto this channel and so you can actually get more exposure for actually what you're doing as well because I think it's super underrated and you do get plenty of, you know, hits and views and, you know, that's why I know who yeah. you are. But I feel like it's even undervalued on that. So I appreciate what you do and that's why we're going to be doing these 10 to 15 or so minute episodes on bodybuilding history. We're going to be talking about, you know, not what always way back in the seventies, but you know, the 2001 Olympias an episode we've got coming up uh, where, and another yeah. where WWE's Vince McMahon tr started his own bodybuilding federation and always tried to push the IFB out. Lots of really cool topics right. that we're going to be talking about. And um, yeah, I think people are going to be excited for it. So um, I really appreciate you coming on, John. And uh, yeah, basically like, uh, I just want you to be able to actually promote a few things that you want to promote quickly. So uh, give us a bit of an idea of a few things you've got going on at the moment. Yeah, I got a, I got a bodybuilding seminar coming up, which I'm really excited about. It's going to be a two day seminar and it's going to be in Tampa, Florida where I live and it's going to be on March 21st and 22nd. So as you said, I've been in the sport for over 40 years. I'm going to take all my 40 years of knowledge and I'm going to put it into the seminar. So the seminar is going to be unique because it's going to be a classroom setting for the first part of the day. And then we're going to go into the gym and I'm going to show everybody how to do all the individual exercises that I think are the best ones. So it's going to be a two day seminar. We'll do it on Saturday and Sunday. And um, we're going to cover all aspects of the physique, like how to analyze your physique, how to determine your own genetics, how to uh, do a physique assessment, what actually makes a muscle grow. We're going to talk about the right weights to use, the right reps to use, how many sets you should do, uh, how to overcome a weak body part. Like if, let's say if your chest is weak, but you're benching a lot of weight, you don't know how to get your chest up, I'll go over every body part and talk about that, how to get each muscle group up. And then, as I said, we go into the into the gym, the second part of the workout, or the second part of the seminar, and we're just going to go over every individual exercise. So we'll do half the body on Saturday and half the body on Sunday. So it's going to be really intensive. I think it's going to be really great. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. So the cost for that is like $495 for both days. That's right. Uh, if you do it by if you do it by February 1st, after that it goes up to 595. But because we're doing the exercise instruction one-on-one, -on -one, we have to limit the class size to only 15 people. So, you know, the sooner they sign up, the better. So that's a, that's one thing I got going on. The other thing I got going on is I have a new website called johnhansonfitness.com and we're doing a fitness challenge for the new year. Cause this is of course the time when everybody gets in shape after the yeah. holidays. So I offer uh, consultations on my website where I personalize your diet and your training. And I do, I do do it personalized. I don't just give a, a cookie cutter routine to somebody. I have them fill out a questionnaire and I look at their age and their metabolism and what their previous experience was and what kind of gains they're making now with the training and the diet they're doing now. And then I tweak it and I change it so they can start making gains towards their goals. If they're trying to lose fat, if they're trying to gain muscle, whatever they're trying to do. So we're going to do a fitness challenge that's going to be 12 weeks. Usually when I do a program like that, it lasts for four weeks. I'm offering it for $300 for the same price for 12 weeks. So they'll get me as a coach each week helping them for a period of 12 weeks. And then whoever makes the most progress in that 12-week period is going to get prizes. We're going to get prizes out to the first three placers. So we're going to get uh, supplements from old school labs. They're getting like $200 in supplements to the winners. And you will also get a copy of each of my DVDs and all, all three of my books that I have out now. So oh, wow. that that's going to be that's, pretty exciting. That's awesome value. Like even if there was no prizes associated with it, like that value is actually really good for 12 weeks. For, for, what was it, $300? Yeah. yeah, $300 for 12 weeks. So and can you anyone like do that from around the world? Yeah, around the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. So that's they awesome. have to get their entry fee in or they have to enter the contest by January 15th. So we've got about 10 days left and uh, the contest will start then on the 20th and it'll go to April 13th. Yeah. So it's a great way for everybody to get in shape and then get a chance to win some prizes too. Brilliant. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. The show is coming out. We're going to be putting out the next episode once a week. It's going to be out every week. So I'm not sure exactly sure what day we're going to do it yet, but it'll be out one week after each episode goes up. So John, thank you so much for coming on. Everyone make sure you. that you subscribe to John's podcast, the links, to his podcast, uh, to his websites and all that sort of stuff is in the description as well. So make sure you click on that. And guys, if you like this content on this channel, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell button. That way you won't miss out on any videos from myself and any videos from John as well coming up in the future. So that's it for another episode. For Xavier Wills, John Hansen, we are out.